Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette. In today's video, I show you step-by-step step my eight favorite ways to fold a pocket square so you look effortlessly elegant. If you've been with us for a while, you may say, wait a second, didn't you already film a video about that? Yes, it's true, but it was years ago and we've come a long way ever since. Honestly, pocket squares are one of my favorite accessories and I hardly ever leave the house without one, except maybe if you have a jacket with a big boot in here and another pocket square would just throw everything off balance visually. While many pocket squares are just plain or have the same pattern, some other pocket squares can be folded in many different ways. I sometimes call them three in one pocket squares because you can wear it this way or that way or just combine the look. Now, before I show you step-by-step step how to fold the pocket squares, I want you to keep two things in mind. One is different pocket squares have different sizes. And sometimes they're too big, sometimes they're too small and they disappear in your pocket. But ideally, you want something that works perfectly for your chest pocket. Now at Fort Belvedere, we're a firm believer in producing pocket squares that make you look your best. And that means every material has a different size because no two textures, stiffnesses and weights are the same. Likewise, just with a self-tied bow tie, you never want your pocket square to look like it's folded too perfectly, too neatly or too symmetrically. Why? Because you wanna strive for a nonchalant elegance that just looks like you put it there and it fell into place and not like someone who actually ironed a pocket square because that makes it look like a pre-folded one and that's never stylish. So without further ado, here are my favorite pocket square folds. Number one, the classic fold, also known as the square fold, the straight fold, TV fold, or presidential fold. The classic fold is a very traditional fold and typically is seen on news anchors, weddings, or maybe formal offices at a law firm. Of course, I also show you how to make it look a bit more casual, but in general, this type of a fold looks best with linen or cotton pocket squares, which have a bit of stiffness to them. I first start out with a pocket square and I want the hand rolled edge to face up. So I fold it in half this way. Now I can fold it in half once more. And while I do this, I can make sure that everything aligns properly. So from the front, I just wanna have one neat edge. Make sure you fold about one third or a quarter, depending on the depth of your pocket, and take it and put it in your pocket to see how it fits. You may have to adjust it a little bit until you show about one quarter to one half an inch out of your pocket. Traditionally, this corner points towards your left shoulder. Some people prefer it to point it the other way, that's fine too. In this case, it was folded so it pointed towards the inside. I could just flip it around the other way and it would point towards the outside. Now, if I don't want this kind of a stiff fold, what I can do is I can slightly, when I fold it, arrange things, have this kind of top edge already come out a little bit, have it stand like this, and then maybe have it even like folded like this, so all these edges are visible and the overall look is just a little more nonchalant in your pocket. If you have stronger contrast edges, you can accentuate them a little more by again, pulling up a little bit, folding it a little more, and then just once you've tucked it in your pocket, you can also adjust it a little more later just to get the final look that looks great for you. When you see a tag here, I just make sure to fold it in so it's not visible. Or in this case, I'd probably start over again and just fold a different direction. That way there's no visible tag and I just have a nice neat, clean looking pocket square. The second fold is a so-called crown fold, or other people call it the points fold. It looks particularly good with a contrast edge or 
some cross stitching for example and something that has a little bit of stiffness to it such as a linen square or maybe a wool a wool silk square. It can also work with a silk pocket square just make sure it's big enough so it doesn't disappear in your pocket. It's very easy you start and you basically want the one corner to be folded like so so it's very closely next to the other one. Then you fold the right corner in so it comes in like that and finally the other corner. If you see this tag here you just fold it under or you basically cut it off. Once you have this you can either fold them to the inside like so or you can fold them flip it around to the back side. Then again you fold up about a third or depending on what your pocket is so you have it like so and you can actually tuck it in like so. Now you never want this to look too symmetrical otherwise it looks like a pre-folded pocket square. So what you can do when you start out you can pull them a little higher and a little lower just to be a little more playful. Alternatively what you can do is you can make the fold quite a bit wider and then you basically fold it on the way in or in the back. That way you're getting a fold that's a bit more unusual and it has just a different look to it even though there are points. Now the third option is to use what is called the kind of point fold where you can just take your pocket square like this, you pinch it in the middle here, you pull it through and you look what kind of result you get and just maybe you can twist it by half and then put it in your pocket. The advantage of this fold is that it always looks very effortless, very easily. At the same time, it's not very consistent and every time it's slightly different. Some people like it, others hate it. If you want more consistency, go with the crown method I showed in the beginning. If you like it more effortless and nonchalant, use this method. For a crown fold, you wanna make sure that you have hand rolled edges because they look a lot nicer than machined hemmed ones. A pocket square is a decorative piece and because of that, you always wanna have the best possible edge which is a hand rolled edge. Here you have an X stitch, you can also have a regular edge or a shoestring contrast edge. To learn more about the differences in quality of hand rolled edges, please check out this video here. The third fold is the puff fold or the pinch fold. These look particularly dapper in a silk or silk wool blend because the folds break the light in a very sophisticated way. Now I've made this fold with a linen pocket square before and it works but if it's too stiff chances are it will pop out over the course of the day which doesn't look stylish. It's called puff or pinch because you start by pinching it in the middle, again you create a little hole and pull it right through nicely until you like the puff. Once you're there you can twist either by half or full rotation and just see what it looks like and stuff it in your pocket. By creating the rotation you keep the pocket squares and the little folds in place. That way you can see the light breaks very nicely and very elegantly. Some other people like to start it in the same way. They pinch it first, they push it through and then they kind of push it in like so. Personally I don't like it very much because over the course of the day it'll just puff out and then in your pocket it's just a big pooth that's not very elegant. A third way to get a somewhat more irregular puff is to take one corner, tuck it into your pocket, then take the opposite corner, stuff it in as well, then take the others, stuff them in until you just have something in the center that you like. Again, make sure you look where the tag is so it doesn't stand out and is visible. The easiest way to do that is just to cut out the tag, but be careful not to cut into the hand rolled edge or to damage the pocket square. A small pair of nail scissors or maybe a seam ripper are best. 
The fourth fold is the upside down puff fold. And it's just like the puff fold, but you point out the opposite first. I think this one works particularly well with a silk or silk wool pocket square. Linen can be a little stiff. And ideally, the center of your pocket square has a different look than the edges. That way it gives you maximum versatility and flexibility in creating a look that is unique. The upside down puff fold is very similar to the points fold and a puff fold because you start out by pinching, you create a little circle, you pull things through, you twist in a half once, and you really look more at the points and the tips and you stuff it into your pocket. Now, the beauty is you can show one point or two points or three points or four points, or you can also show the medallion as well as the points. It looks particularly nice if the center is different from the edges. Now, some people like to just show three points with the center. Others like to show just two, or they put it on the side. Others just like to show one, tuck them all in, and just show one point with the pocket square. The choice is up to you. You can do whatever you like. Just make sure your pocket square is large enough so it won't disappear in your pocket. For example, if you look at this pocket square, it's a lot too small and it doesn't have the right contrast edges. So if you create that fold here, it just doesn't look as impressive and it will also disappear in your pocket over the course of the day. The fifth fold is one of my secret favorites. It is called the shell fold. It is unusual in the sense that you don't see it a lot. It requires a bit of skill and I like it with a silk pocket square or a silk wool pocket square that is sizable, otherwise it'll just disappear in your pocket. First of all, fold the pocket square on to the side so the hand rolled edges point up and you see the back side of the pocket square. Now fold it in half diagonally so you have a big nice triangle. Now take your left index finger, point it in the middle and fold it again in half, making sure that you see enough of the pattern back and forth like so. Then lift your index finger on the left, put it down again and fold it once more. And you can even fold it one more if you want, but usually three times is enough. If you have this and you fold it in this way, you get a beautiful shell. Now, as you can see, that can look quite symmetrical. And again, this is not something you want. So you stuff it in your pocket and then you start pulling on the shells so you get a slightly different look that is askew and more elegant. You can also try to put them a little closer together and pinch them in a different way and get just a different look that incorporates this shell fold, but it's still different. When you use a silk wool pocket square like this one, the look is a little more matte. On the other hand, if you use a silk pocket square, it's a little more vibrant. So again, starting by folding it in half diagonally, and again, one, two. Where you fold the folds towards your tie, towards your shoulder, or to the middle, it always creates a different look that is quite sophisticated. Number six is the scallop fold, which really highlights the edges of a pocket square. So it works well with contrasting edges and something that's just visually interesting. It is similar to a shell fold in the sense that it uses the curves of the pocket square. I think it looks particularly nice if you have a contrast edge or maybe a cross stitch edge. Just the contrast between the edge and the pocket square is important. So again, I flip it around. So I have the back side up. I fold it in half diagonally once. I fold it in half diagonally twice. And I want to make sure that ideally the edges here, the contrast edges are all visible and not just aligned. In the next step, I'm folding in the edges here and this one and then this one. Folding the edges here on the side, folding it up and putting it in a pocket. Now I can adjust the scalloped edges just so it's a little more 
elegant and nonchalant. You can see the contrast edges just create an interesting visual cue. If you want to, in the last step, you can also fold it slightly asymmetrically, just as to get a more unusual curve and look that's a little more elliptical and unusual. I just like it when it looks a bit different and not too studied. Fold number seven is the rose fold. It works particularly well with a pocket square that is printed on something where you see the pattern in the back or maybe it's printed on both sides. You start out by actually taking the back side and you want a pocket square where the printed back shows through. Now you fold the corners to the center until you get a square. It almost looks like a little package. Now you take your three fingers and pinch down here in the middle. Take your left hand, hold it in place, and pull out your center a little bit. Now, stuff it in your pocket, adjust a bit, pull out the center, and you get this typical kind of rose pattern where you have the points that surround the center. In this case, the center still has a pattern, so it creates a nice, visually interesting look. Last but not least, the angel's peak fold is very similar to a crown fold, and I typically prefer the crown fold, but if you have a contrast edge, the angel's peak fold puts the contrast in a different position, which can look quite elegant. Just keep in mind with the angel's peak fold, adjust the tips or the points so they look more effortless and not like they just came out of a pre-folded set. You fold it diagonally like this, and you take it in half, now you get things up like this and like this. Or you may even like pull it out like so. You can see the edge of the pocket square now shows on the side and the other edge has no visible stitching. So once you have that, you can fold the pocket square to the, to the width of your pocket square, fold it down and put it in your pocket. Again, if you want to see the difference to the pattern, Look at this pocket square here versus if we fold this one. It has quite a different look. Ideally, you want to pull these edges slightly higher, slightly lower, just so you get a more effortless look. Not something that looks too studied. That's why I like the cross stitches because they're slightly irregular anyways. Now, of course, there are plenty of other folds. One really popular one is probably the so-called stair fold. Personally, I'm not a big fan of it because it looks very symmetrical and just like I got it from a set from Men's Warehouse. Now, in my mind, the only way a stairs fold looks good, if you have a center medallion and something that is different on the outside, something that's large enough and something that's like a silver blend that is soft enough to actually get the right definition. If you have something too springy, like a linen fabric, it just won't work. This one, for example, here is just too springy. But let me show you how to fold it. You turn it around on the back side. You basically fold it in half diagonally. Now, you take the tip and you go in the other direction again and you start just shy of the edge and you fold it back again. Now what you want is parallel lines on the pocket square and you can do it again. Go forward, make sure the fold stays and then go backward. Now you have three, you can do it once more till four. You get these. Once you're like this, Hold it in place with your left hand, with your index finger, go underneath and fold it in half this way. Now, when you have this, you fold it under like so to hold it in place, fold it under, and now you tuck it into your pocket. You can either tuck this way in or you just fold it the other way around and you tuck the other way in. I always try the right to be a little higher because that's the side I want to put in points towards my shoulder. Now, 
When it's in right now, it looks very symmetrical and planned, and I don't like that. So I'm pulling a little bit on each fold and try to get an angle in there that makes it look a little more unique and nonchalant. I urge you to experiment a bit because with practice come better folds. Finally, all the quality pocket squares in this video are available in our shop here. I designed all of them myself to make sure they have the proper size, they have an unusual color scheme that picks up other colors in your outfit so it always looks harmonious and elegant. If you have a white pocket square with an initial, you can also fold it so the middle initial is visible in the front. Looks quite cool. If it's too much for you, you can just fold the initial back and it just looks plain white. In today's video, I'm wearing a vintage Donegal tweed coat in a gray with colored flex, and I'm combining it with a Fair Isle sweater vest from Ralph Lauren. It has a V-neck, so it works well with the blue and light blue modeled silk knit tie, which you can find in our shop here. My shirt is blue and white striped, which picks up the color of the tie, as well as of my chino pants in navy, but it also harmonizes and picks up the color of the Fort Belvedere pocket square in white linen with contrast cross edge stitching. For the socks, I chose a pair of shadow striped over the calf socks in gray and red from Fort Belvedere. They pick up the red color of the shoes and tie it together with the jacket and the pants. Note, we also have a navy and red pair of socks, which would have worked just as fine, but the beauty about shutter type socks is that they work with all kinds of colors and pants much better or so than a solid pair of socks. To learn more about that, please check out our free guide on how to pair shoes with socks and pants. My cufflinks are silver platinum plated monkey fist knot links from Fort Belvedere, and I'm combining them with a pinky ring, which is kind of a scratched white gold with a very interesting texture and an artificial blue sapphire, which picks up the blue tones of the outfit and ties it all together. <laughs> Thank you.